Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about a drama romance film called Lolita from 1997. Enjoy your viewing. The film begins with Humbert driving down the road. He is surrounded by an open field, holding a pin between his fingers. His hands are bloody, and there is a gun on the passenger seat next to him. He is driving aimlessly. He talks about Lo, looking at the pin in his hands, the love of his life. The film is told through his narration, his point of view. Humbert talks about Annabelle, whom he met when he was 14. She wanted to be a nurse, and Humbert wanted to be a spy. They were madly, hopelessly in love, as much as you can be at that age. However, four months later she died. The boy's childhood died with her. He continued to search for her, even after he grew up. In 1947, in New England, Humbert got a teaching position at Beardsley College in the United States. He moves to live in the home of a friend of his late uncle, the McHugh's family. But upon arrival, he discovers that the house has burned down. Charlotte Hayes, a friend of the McCoo's and a widower, kindly agrees to take him in instead. He gets to know Charlotte. She praises him for his scientific knowledge and subtly flirts with him, saying that she appreciates his French tongue. She gives him a short tour of the house. In the middle of the tour, Humbert mentions that he looked at his schedule and might have to go back to New York. Charlotte remarks that Humbert must not be happy with their surroundings, and Humbert tries to make an excuse by citing a conference he has to attend. Instead, she insists that he must see the square, and that's where they find Lolita. She is flipping through a magazine and is soaking wet, owlage, and subtly flirts with him, saying that she appreciates his French tongue. Her clothes hide almost nothing. Underwear is visible underneath. Humbert can't take his eyes off her. Lo looks up and smiles at him, showing her braces. He mutters that she is beautiful and asks Charlotte how much the room cost. Lo comes into his room and says that she is bored. Humbert encourages her. When she comes closer to him, she sits on his lap and asks him if he sees a pimple on her. He tells her that he thinks she is perfect, and she smiles, asking if he is interested in seeing how her chin sways. He agrees, and she shows him. Charlotte calls out to him, and Lo instantly jumps up and runs away. Charlotte catches Lo as she runs to her room, and Humbert tries to get rid of the gum that Lo left on his notebook. He manages to tear the gum off the paper and puts it in his mouth. Charlotte asks him if Lo is disturbing him, but he denies it. Charlotte decides to send Lo to the camp. On the day she leaves, Humbert hurriedly looks out the window as they get into the car. Lo sees him looking out the window and runs out of the car and back up the stairs into Humbert's arms. She hugs him and kisses him goodbye. The girl smiles and runs back to the car. Later, Charlotte confesses that she loves Humbert and asks him to leave before she returns. If he doesn't, it will only mean that he wants to be with her as much as she wants to be with him. Not wanting to be away from Lo, Humbert stays and marries Charlotte, despite the fact that he does not like Charlotte. One day, when he returns home, he finds Charlotte crying at the table. She found a way to get into his secret drawer and read his diary, in which he did not hide his honest opinion of her and how much he liked Lo. She calls him a criminal monster. The woman says she is leaving and swears that he will never see Lo again. He tells her that they both need a drink and goes to pour them a drink. Humbert receives a phone call informing him that Charlotte has died. Humbert realizes that Charlotte is no longer at her desk. The front door is open wide. He goes out and finds her lifeless body in the middle of the street. In a hurry, she threw herself under the wheels of a car. She was on her way to send out letters to everyone warning them about Humbert's evil deeds against the children. The first thing he does is pick up Lo from the camp. In the car, Lo asks about Charlotte, and Humbert tells her that she is in the hospital with a stomach problem. He tells her that he missed her, and Lo replies that she did not. She tells him that she thinks he doesn't care about her because he hasn't kissed her yet. They parked on the side of the road, and Lo immediately climbed into his lap so they could kiss. At the hotel where they are staying, Humbert talks to the receptionist, and Lo crawls up to the dog and plays with him for a moment, before the mysterious owner remarks that his dog doesn't like many people, but surprisingly likes Lo. She asks him what kind of people the dog likes, and he replies that it likes nice people like Lo. While Lo is getting ready for bed, Humbert goes outside. He runs into the man Lo was talking to earlier. He tells him that Lo is her daughter, but the other man knows he is lying. He asks about Lo's mother, and Humbert tells him that she is dead. The man invites them both to lunch tomorrow, but Humbert declines and says they will be leaving soon. Humbert leaves and feels that this meeting was strange. The next morning, Lo woke him up and told him about all the secrets she had been making in the camp. He asks her if she really did it with Charlie at camp. She playfully tells him that she guesses she needs to show him and starts to unbutton his pajama pants. Back on the road, Lo asks him if he could take her to a gas station because she is in pain. He looks at her in a panic. When they arrive, Lo turns and asks Humbert for some change to call Charlotte at the hospital. He tells her that she can't answer, and the girl asks him why she can't get in touch with her mother. Humbert finally tells her the truth. They travel across the United States, and Lo visibly misses Humbert. 
Finally, they stop at Beardsley College, where Humbert gets a teaching position. He talks about being in heaven, despite the fuss she makes. When they arrive at Beardsley College, he also gets Lowe into the very liberal Beardsley Preparatory School. One afternoon, Lowe tells Humbert that she would like to take part in the school play. Humbert already knows about this. He refuses. She tries to seduce him to get her way, telling him that she has the right to be in the play if she wants to. She declares that she wants a lot of things too, just as he wants a lot from her. She demands that he increase her salary and also allow her to act in the play. Humbert sees Claire Quilty when he comes to Lowe's rehearsal for the play. This is the man they met in the hotel when they first started traveling. He is a playwright and is in charge of the current play. The relationship between them grows increasingly cold as Humbert begins to buy her favor. He thinks she is saving every penny to get away from him. The man finds out that Lowe has missed her last two piano lessons. He asks her what she was doing, and she explains that she was rehearsing a play with Mona. He calls Mona, and the girl admits that they rehearsed in the park. Humbert doesn't believe her, and they start to fight. He accuses Lowe of trying to run away from him, which she does not deny. He demands that she return the money he gave her, but she says she earned it. He beats her. She asks him to kill her the same way he took her mother's life. He asks her to stop, but she refuses and continues to accuse him. She screams and runs away from him. Humbert finds Lowe at the pharmacy. Lowe quickly tries to hide the fact that she was on the phone. She tells him that she has been trying to reach him since she made her decision. She wants to leave Beardsley and go on another journey, but this time, she chooses where they go. He agrees. Lowe decides that they need to get to Weiss in a week. Humbert asks why, and Lowe explains that they have to see the ceremonial dances in the Magic Caves. In two weeks and four days, they have to be in Elphinstone to climb the Red Rock. She shows Humbert the map and says she is very excited. On the way, Humbert notices that they are being followed. He asks her to write down the license plate number and realizes that a detective is following them. Humbert becomes paranoid, unable to keep his eyes on the road. One day, he keeps looking over his shoulder, and as a result, they get a flat tire. When he goes to fix the tire, a car that was following them stops a few feet away. He decides to argue with the driver, but realizes too late that Lowe has taken control of the car and is driving away. He catches up to her because she wasn't going fast enough and orders her to hit the handbrake. She tells him that he should be grateful to her because she stopped the car. Back on the road, Humbert asks Lowe to give him the notebook on which she wrote down the license plate number. He discovers that she has forged what she wrote. He says her name and slaps her hard as she faces him. She gets out of the car and runs away in frustration. Humbert catches up with her and apologizes. They drive to Crawford's cottages on Lake Point and stay there for the night. He goes out to the barbershop and hears on the radio that Quilty can't be in the studio because he's in Vance. When he returns to their room, he finds Lowe in a mess, with dirty feet and smeared lipstick. He tells her she's been out, but she lies to him, saying she just got up. He throws her on the bed and begs her to tell him the truth. She just smiles at him, kisses him, and laughs. Lowe is sick, so Humbert takes her to the hospital where she stays overnight. The doctor asks him to leave, otherwise he will get infected too. The next day, he calls to check on Lolita. The nurse tells him that Lowe is feeling much better and that her uncle Gustav came and discharged her. Humbert asks her who exactly, and she repeats herself, describing Quilty. Humbert goes to the hospital and looks into the room where he last saw Lowe. The bed has been made, and the flowers he brought for her have been thrown in the trash. He attacks the doctor who is looking for Lowe, and they try to hold him down. He sees the police arrive and calms down, apologizing sincerely before leaving. He tries to find her, going back to all the places they were. He can't find them because he doesn't know who kidnapped her. Eventually, the trail he follows fades away. He returns to Beardsley. After three years, Humbert receives a letter from Lowe. She tells him that she is married and will soon have a baby. They need help, and she asks for money to help them survive. She shares that she has experienced a lot of grief and hardship. Humbert goes to see Lowe and finds a mature version of her. She greets him warmly, and he notices that she is injured. Lowe invites him in. She realizes that he is still looking for the man who kidnapped her and explains that her husband had nothing to do with it. He gets up and says he will find out for himself, and she is surprised that he really doesn't know anything. Finally, she tells him that it was Quilty. Lowe tells Humbert that Quilty was the only man she was truly crazy about, and Humbert asks her about the feelings between them. She gets up and goes to the kitchen. Humbert follows her. He asks where Quilty has taken Lowe. She tells him that everyone knew that he loved little girls so much that he filmed them in his mansion. Lowe refused to film any of them and told Quilty that she was only interested in him. After that... Quilty kicked her out. This is the last time he asks her to accompany him. Lowe thinks he's offering her money if she sleeps with him in a motel, but Humbert denies it. He tells her that she will still get the money even if she refuses. Lowe is disbelieving when he finds dollar four thousand in an envelope. He asks if there is any chance she will go with him, but she refuses. He leaves, 
but before he does, he asks her if she can ever forget what he did to her. Instead of answering, she asks her dog to say goodbye to him. It turns out that Humbert went to Quilty's estate and killed him. Humbert drives recklessly down the road, and the police pursue him. The movie ends with the police catching Humbert and sending him to prison. There, he dies of coronary thrombosis, and Lowe dies the following month from childbirth. It is important to note that most of the movie is told from Humbert's point of view, who had a distorted view of Lowe's feelings for him. Lowe was actually manipulated and used by him throughout their relationship. The movie itself is very mild compared to what really happened. If you have watched the video so far, you should know that I am happy to have viewers like you. Thank you for watching to the end. Subscribe to the channel and follow the news. Klonsack Recapped was with you. See you soon.